side effects of ACEI inhibitors, cough and bronchospasm, cough due to the accumulation of the bradykinin and which result in increase in the prostaglandins. So here, uh, this cough is not treated by the antitussue agent or cough syrup because this cough is due to the bradykinin and the prostaglandins. So we have to use the drugs which inhibits the prostaglandins. And the drugs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, that is NSIDs. So for the management of the cough, which is caused by Just a minute, uh, let me show the meetings. Yes, okay. So if the cough is induced by ACEI inhibitors. So we cannot treat by the using antitussue or cup syrups. Here we need the non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs because this cuff is induced by the bradykinin and the prostaglandin. So NSAIDs will inhibit the prostaglandins. Enzyoedema. It is the also limiting adverse effect, and this includes a fever, a rash, urticaria, and edema of lips, eyelids, larynx, and maybe the death due to increase in the bradykinin and hypersensitivity to sulfa hydryl group. So, not all the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors having the uh, angioedema as adverse effect only the drugs which is from the belongs to the category of sulfa hydril the first one captopril alacepril and zopinopril these three drugs are responsible for the angioedema because the most of the patients are hypersensitive with this chemical formula sulfa hydril so angioedema is responsible for the sulfahydryl group in the ACEIs. And these are the three drugs, captopril, ilacepril, and zopinopril. So if there is an NGO edema as adverse effect, so it is contraindicated for the hypersensitive patients. It also responsible for the protein urea with a large and toxic dose only. If it is given in the large dose, may cause protein urea and neutropenia. So the it should be contraindicated in the persons with the patients with the neutropenia and the thrombocytopenia. Temporary loss of the taste and in the orthostatic, it causes the postural hypotension, decrease in the blood pressure, especially with the first dose and in salt depleted patient. So the first dose should be, should be low. The first dose of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor should be low to minimize or to take care of the postural hypotension, orthostatic hypotension. And in the pregnancy, the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are contraindicated, teratogenic effect. It is a first line agent, but in the pregnancy, don't prescribe angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors because it is reported FDA category X contraindicated during the pregnancy and lactation. It is also responsible for renal failure in the patients with the bilateral renal artery stenosis 
और यूनिलैटरल रीनल आर्टरी स्टेनोसिस सो कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेटेड इन द रीनल फेल्यूअर पेशेंस एंड इट इज ऑल्सो रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द ड्रग इंड्यूस ल्यूपस एस एल ई एस एल ई सिस्टेमिक ल्यूपस इरोथोमेटस which is the autoimmune reactions autoimmune disease so the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are also responsible for the drug induced lupus and the last one is but not the least hyperkalemia it increase the potassium concentration in the blood so the patient with the hyperkalemia acei should be contra indicated now the sulfhydryl group is responsible for the hypersensitivity that's why the angio angioedema proteinuria neutropenia taste disturbances and skin rashes are due to सल्फा हाइड्रिल ग्रुप नाउ द कफ कफ व्हिच इज काउस्ड बाय और ड्यू टू द एसीई इज काउस्ड बाय एक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ द ब्रेडिकाइनिन व्हिच इज नॉर्मली मेटाबॉलाइज्ड बाय एंजियोटेंसिन कन्वर्टिंग एंजाइम बट इफ वी इनहिबिट द एंजियोटेंसिन कन्वर्टिंग एंजाइम देयर इज नो मेटाबॉलिज्म ऑफ ब्रेडिकाइनिन if the met there is a no metabolism of the bradykinin there is a accumulation of the bradykinin and if the accumulation of the bradykinin there is increase in prostaglandin synthesis and this prostaglandin synthesis is responsible for the cough and this cough is treated by non steroidal anti inflammatory drug because this nsaids will inhibit the cox cyclooxygenase enzyme thereby decrease the prostaglandin synthesis and thereby treat the cough if the patient having the same symptoms of the cough with the acei we have another choice discontinue the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor and switch to the arb that is angiotensin 2 receptor blocker as we discussed in the mechanism now amongst the nsaids which drug you will be preferred for the treatment of acei's induced cough because there are so many non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs including paracetamol acetaminophen same both are same ibuprofen we have uh, sulindac we have diclofenac we have naproxen so which drug you will be prefer so generally sulindac remember this drug for your uh, mcq sulindac is a non steroidal anti inflammatory is preferred because it offer renal sparing effect renal kidney spare save does not affect the kidney because sulindac is a pro drug that is converted to its active metabolite in the liver and then become irreversibly inactivated in the kidneys so it is inactivated in the kidney so no effect on the kidney does not affect renal prostaglandins synthesis so it it will not cause the vasoconstriction because the now prostaglandins are responsible for the vasoconstrictions in the kidney so it does not cause the vasoconstriction and does not affect the kidney that's why the sulindac is preferred so if there is a question which one of the following nsaids is preferred for the management of the cough 
induced by the ACEI, you should answer Sulindac because it is a prodrug, does not affect the kidney and does not affect the prostaglandin synthesis, does not cause the vasoconstriction in the kidney as compared to other NSCDIs. The combined use of ACEIs and non steroidal anti inflammatory drug is hazardous. Why? As we discussed here, see this image, you will get why the combined used here. Suppose we are using non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs is reduce the prostaglandin synthesis, no prostaglandins. So it causes the generally the vasodilation mediated by the prostaglandins. Vasodilation mediated by the prostaglandins. And if we use NSAIDs, they reduce the prostaglandins. So it causes the vasoconstriction, vasoconstriction. And vasoconstriction is mediated by the angiotensin 2. If we inhibit the production of angiotensin 2, and we inhibit the angiotensin converting enzymes, because vasoconstriction is mediated by angiotensin 2, what will be the effect? So, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs causes the vasoconstriction at efferent arterioles and angiotensin converting enzymes inhibits the vasoconstriction at efferent arterioles. So it generally affects the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and filtrations. That's why the combined use of ACEI and NSAIDs are hazardous. So avoid this combined use. Instead of this combined use, use angiotensin receptor blocker that is losartan, valsartan. Angiotensin converting enzymes inhibitors if used during pregnancy, teratogenic as uh, we discussed in the contraindications because in the form of intrauterine growth restrictions, fatal lung hypoplasia and the fatal death. So it should be avoided uh, in the pregnancy, same as we discussed. And there is uh, some precautions during the use of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. First dose should be the small and at bedtime. Why? Because the first dose of ACEI may produce orthostatic hypotension. So to reduce this hypotension, the dose should be the small and to reduce the orthostatic, the best one, take at bedtime because take the medication and sleep because orthostatic means when the patient stand. So to avoid the standing position, take at bedtime to reduce the orthostatic hypotension. And as we discussed that, these angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors may cause increase in the blood potassium hyperkalemia. So it is very important, the measurement of the blood potassium, blood urea, and the serum creatinine before and one week after the use of ACEIs and then every three months. And it is reported that increase in serum creatinine by up to 30% is accepted when the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers are used in treatment of chronic kidney disease. 
so if the creatinine is increased no need to worry it is due to use of the drug use diuretic with it should be cautiously as lead to decrease blood pressure the first dose may be the synco hypotension so potassium sparing diuretic produces the hyperkalemia so contraindicated with aceis because if we we give the potassium sparing diuretic with the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors potassium sparing diuretic also increase the level of potassium in the blood and aceis also increase the level of potassium in the blood so may leads to life threatening hyperkalemia <clears throat> so they should be contra indicated and plus this angiotensin receptor blockers or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are also contraindicated in the bilateral renal artery stenosis because as we know this decrease in the gfr and the vasodilation of the renal efferent artery walls which is generally decrease the gfr rate and causes the renal failure now this is all about the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor which is the first line of the drug <clears throat>